So X-linked traits is the topic of the day. What does X-linked refer to with regard to genetics? And what is the X factor? Man, Man or? Uh, male. male or female, right? So when we're talking about X-linked traits, we're talking about traits that are specific to the sex chromosomes. So X-linked traits refer to the X chromosome and the Y chromosome. In particular, X-linked traits focus on what's on the X chromosome. We could talk about holandric or Y-linked traits. Those would be found specifically on the Y chromosome. Who are the people that would be affected by traits on the Y chromosome? Correct. So males would be affected by anything that's on the Y chromosome. Females and males are affected by what's on the X chromosome. The next thing that we need to review, and we talked about this already, if we have two X's as sex chromosome, what does that mean? Two X's makes you female. So two X's is female. An X and a Y then make you male. So two X's is female. An ultrasound? Yeah. Mm-hmm. When you can have an ultrasound, so ultrasound would provide an image which they can look at and make a prediction as to male or female. Uh, an ultrasound, they will not predict 100% whether you have male or female, probably because in the past someone has sued them because they said they were having a girl and it was a boy or vice versa. So they will only offer a, it's a pretty good chance that it is, or maybe they'll say 70% chance that it's a girl or it's a boy. So they can do that. They can do, remember we talked about amniocentesis where they take the needle, insert that uh, into the uterus, withdraw some of the fluid that's around the baby. Were you here for that discussion? That, the cells that would slough off from the skin cells of the baby, they can culture that and then they can look for the XX and the XY. Ultrasound is less invasive, less risk to the baby. They have a way to do it. So XX female, XY male, is that set them up to be unique anyway? Is there anything that we should be aware of having two copies of the X versus one copy of the X? Does two copies of the X chromosome in females give them an advantage? having one copy of a chromosome give you an advantage? What I want you to think about is whatever letter gets put on the X chromosome. So whatever gene we are dealing with, that shows in a male, right? If they have the dominant trait, it shows. If they have the recessive trait, it shows. There's nothing else to balance it. So males are referred to as hemizygous because they have half that genetic information. They have half of the X information. Normally we talk about everything in pairs. Females can be homozygous or heterozygous because they will have one copy on each X. So they carry two copies of that information like they do with every other chromosome. In males, all of the other somatic or autosomal chromosomes carry all of that information. In the XY case, whatever the male has on the X chromosome shows up. So that's why they're referred to as hemizygous, because whatever they carry, they show. So when you were looking at a family tree, if it's an X-linked trait, males either will have it or they don't. You don't have to make a prediction or wonder if they're heterozygous or homozygous. They have that trait. Now, sometimes that's an advantage because you can see the trait that you're dealing with. Uh, the other time would be, or can you think of an instance when it may be a disadvantage to have just one copy? Oh. 
if you're colorblind and all you need is one copy of that gene and that makes you colorblind, for males, if we said X with a big C means that you have normal vision, then that person is normal. If we said they had a little C, now they're colorblind. Whereas females, to be colorblind, would have to have two little Cs, right? One on each chromosome. So it puts men at a higher risk for any type of genetic disorder that's carried on the X chromosome. It also means that any genetic disorder that is on the X chromosome comes from their mother or father. Who gives them the Y chromosome? Father, right? Men produce the X sperm and the Y sperm. If the Y sperm fertilizes the egg, you have a male. Females only produce an X chromosome. So in the case of a male, any genetic disorder that comes on that X chromosome comes from the mother. The mother may not show the trait because she may just be a carrier, but the son will either have it or he won't. And if he does have that genetic trait, color blindness, it came from the mother's side, not from the father. There are also different hormones that come into effect with genes found on the X chromosome. Other hormones also affect autosomal traits. Uh, baldness comes into play with the amount of hormones. Men produce more testosterone than females, so uh, depends how you carry that trait affects how you show it. So if you were heterozygous in male, you'd be bald, but if you were heterozygous in female, you'd probably still have normal hair. So there are other factors that come into play. So XX female, XY male. What's the chance of having a baby girl any time a child is conceived? Right, it's a 50% chance. So we could say, what's the chance of a female crossed with a male producing a baby girl? You could put this into a Punnett square if you wanted to prove the 50% female, male. So there's 2XX to 2XY simplified 1 to 1. So there's your 50% ratio. You have to, when you code these, tell me whether the person is male or female because that affects how they're carrying the trait. So are we okay with this basic setup here? All right. Let's take an example of color blindness. So this will be one of the examples you'll need to write down. So color blindness is an X-linked trait. Let's say X with a capital C means normal vision. X with a little c equals color blind. So the question would read, in humans, color blindness is recessive to normal vision. Or in humans, normal vision is dominant over color blindness. So generally in the question, it's going to say this is recessive or this is dominant. Same process. We always start with the key. Then let's say a homozygous normal vision female has a child with a colorblind male. So first thing I would recommend that you do in X-linked traits is look for male or female. As soon as you see female, I would write down two X's. Then we remember that each X has to carry the gene. In this case, we're looking for normal vision. So I'm going to go back to my key. Normal vision has a big C. So I know there has to be at least one big C. Right? This is behaving just like any other type of genetic trait. And I also gave the descriptor that they're homozygous. So I have X big C, X big C. Homozygous meaning the same. So X big C, X big C. Does that female carry any color blindness? No. Both of her genes are carrying the normal vision trait. Same process for the male. As soon as it says male, I'm going to write down XY. Here's where the mistake happens. Some people forget that we're dealing with XY, and they don't code that in. 
then that creates problems in your ratios because the ratios are dependent upon male to female. Now, nothing ever goes on the Y chromosome. There is nothing in this space, so nothing gets recorded here. We're dealing with X-linked traits, so there's nothing that goes in that space. It just sits empty. So essentially, it'll look like that. This is the only space we are interested in. It's colorblind. I go to my key. Colorblind has a little C. Am I done? So males only have that one copy. The question will tell you what they are right away. If you see someone who's practicing a genetics question and they're writing something on the Y chromosome, remind them nothing goes on the Y chromosome in this type of question. Then we will put it into a Punnett square. The only types of traits that are found on the Y chromosome that I can think of off the top of my head, uh, nose hair and ear hair come from your father. So if your dad has lovely ear hair or nose hair, you have inherited that as well. Yes, some people have more nose hair or longer nose hairs than others. Or maybe your father secretly trims the nose hair and ear hair so you don't really know what's coming. So this then goes into a Punnett square. Make sure you carry the X chromosome through. I'm going to put X with a little c, y. When you're working with the exponents, just as we did in codominant traits, Mark, you're recording this? I need to see that you're doing this practice question on a piece of paper. So please make sure you keep your letters neat. So X with a big C, X with a little c, X with a big C, y. Do I need to fill out this other one? It's a repeat, so I can cross that out. My genotypic ratio, genotypic being the letters, 1, X, big C, X, little c, that's this one, to 1, X, big C, Y. My phenotypic ratio will be 1, male or female. This is, X, X is female, so 1, female, and she has a big C and a little c, so what does that code for? Normal. Right, a capital letter codes for normal. So one female, normal vision. To one XY is male. And he has a big C, so that means normal, which I heard one of you say. So in these questions, I could ask you, what is the probability of having a normal vision female? Right, normal vision female is one in two. What's the probability of having a colorblind male? Zero. Colorblind male would be zero in this case. The probability of a normal male would be one in two. What do you mean? So, but remember, the male is going to give that X chromosome to his daughter, right? Which is balanced with one from her mother. That's why the daughter, though, however, is a carrier. So I could ask you, is there anyone in the family that's a carrier? In this case, yes, the daughter will carry that. So her children are at risk of color blindness, right? So let's take this cross. Let's make this our next one. Sorry. Now, okay, so let's do that calculation. And Shane, you had a question. Yes, girls can be colorblind, but they'd have to be X little c, X little c. So it's much rarer. Now, let's say a male is colorblind. So we have male colorblind. And let's say they marry a female that is heterozygous for normal vision. So, filling this in, first thing I would write down is male colorblind, I'd write down XY to start with. Colorblind would be a little c. Female, I'm going to write XX. Heterozygous for normal vision, so she has 
x, big C, x, little c. I'd like you to put that into a Punnett square because the person you were asking about, if he marries a woman that is either colorblind or carries the trait, then yes, the children are at risk. But for all the genetic disorders to be at risk for, colorblindness is not the end of the world, right? So I'll quickly just finish this up in case you'd like to check. So you have a female that's a carrier, and in this case you have a female that would be colorblind, and you have a male that could be colorblind. So your genotypic ratio would be 1x big C, x little c, to 1x little c, x little c, to 1x big C, y, to 1x little c, y. So chance of a colorblind female, 1 in 4. Chance of a colorblind male, 1 in 4. So it's still a given.